Welcome back to the Single Malt Review as we return enthusiastically to the glorious world of Indian whiskey. Mm. It's something I'm particularly fond of, but we don't get many opportunities to sample it. In fact, it's been a good couple of years uh, since our first foray into Amrut's offerings. So here we are with Amrut Karambam. Yes, indeed. And that's, mm. um, was that a Tamil word? It's it a... is, a word for a combination or mm. a mixture. And um, very, very apt in this category. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, you said it was a combination of their peated mould and their yep, regular mould. Yeah, unpeated. Um, blended together, mm. or vatted together, as they've said, and then it goes through a rather strange yes. process. First, yeah. into an Oloroso sherry butt, matures for a time in there. Then, into a cask used originally for Amrit's um, own Bangalore Blue brandy. And then finally, into um, its own rum casks. Mm. It sort so, of does a, does a tour of duty of yeah. all of the Indian spirits, I guess. Mm. Bottled at an impressive 50% ABV. And no age statement. Um, what to avoid age statements. Being in the rather warmer climes of Karnataka on India's uh, southwest. Yeah, yeah, they, um, yeah. The, the, the loss stacks up pretty mm. fast in those yes. conditions. Um, so this is, this is sort of a whiskey that has been finished... Four times yeah. almost. It's gone from cask to cask, mm. finish to finish. It's like a gone through the gauntlet of different yeah. aging. I imagine it's a bit like like an episode of American Gladiator. Mm -hmm. It's sort of had to muscle its way through all of these, mm. and and on the other end is this actually a rather lovely dark, yes. um, fifty percent, which is good too, and unchill filtered um, example of what should be a pretty hip happening um, root whiskey. Mm. So. Now, the thing which I couldn't quite discern, mm -hmm. and just for those keeping track at home, this is uh, batch 9 of Kadamba. It's changed a few times over the years, I believe, with different emphasis on different casks. So it's a uh, June 2017 bottle. Yeah, so this is actually a pretty old yeah. bottle by this stage, so um, mm -hmm. the, the modern incarnation of this may be something quite mm -hmm. different. But, yeah, the thing I couldn't discern, though, was, obviously it's based at well, the outset with the um, Amrit's own malting of the unique Indian barley, some peated, some not. Uh, I'm not sure though if that spirit is the uh, bourbon cask matured version, which have been vatted and then go into Oloroso sherry, or if it's the new make spirit goes straight into sherry casks. So there are three, but potentially four types of cask involved here. I tried to find mm -hmm. out more. Um, yeah, a firm answer seems well, not readily forthcoming. I would, I would be fairly confident that the whiskey they begin with mm -hmm. has been conventionally aged sure. in uh, refill bourbon yep. before any of this takes place because I think um, for all of these finishes mm. none of them none of them are long enough to produce something that would take three years right. so this this went in this was whiskey before it started yeah. uh, the finishing there was Amberwood's actual peated and also the yeah. unpeated yeah. single malt offerings uh, which probably vatted, probably yeah. aged yeah separately mm. sort of in parallel and then were were tipped together but so really a kaleidoscopic combination of four different casts it's a, it's a real grab yeah. bag of... I did try Karambam at um, Dramfest a uh, big uh, biannual whiskey festival here. It was the 2018 event, and I remember being impressed. It had about at least uh, three or four different casks to boast then for that particular batch, and you could taste each one in succession. It was mm. real, real kaleidoscope. But anyway, on with this yeah, one. Yeah, the nose here. of this one, I've already been sneaking a few whiffs here because Ooh. this smells pretty promising. There yeah. is a lot going on here, Definitely. as you might expect. There's the Indian barley is quite proteinaceous. It's very rich because of, I guess, its climate and its soil, its environment. So that adds quite a lot in a fairly short space of time. Also, the fact that the climate in India lends itself well to rapid maturation. Yeah. There's, mm. I suppose there's three things that immediately jump out here. One is, mm. the first one is peat. This is definitely... Yeah. There is sure as shit it's peated whiskey. super peated, but is enough to really have an impact. Yeah. There's a lot of, oh, there is some good spice happening. Cardamom is one I often get off Amrit. Mm. I'm, I'm getting, um, well, I should say what the other two things are. Mm. Two, there is youth. There is a bit of mm. young character, slight metallic twang on here, which makes me think this is younger rather than older whiskey. And three, there is. Wood, a lot of wood, yes. uh, which is slightly unusual for um, whiskey. Um, as we've we, the once we've tasted in the past, has been very, very heavy on the spice and very, very heavy on the 
sort of ripe stone mm. fruit, almost tropical fruit, as if it's in a way reflective of the place where it was produced and um, and aged, which is interesting that that would happen. But we've seen it time and again. There is a quite a tropical element to armor whiskey. Yeah. There's um, hints, though, the rum and brandy are coming through, and there's a good sherry note as well. You can discern each cask off here. I yeah. haven't, sadly, yet tried Amaranth's rum or brandy. I don't think I've seen it around locally. But if a whiskey's anything to go by, it's probably a very good. Yeah, there's a, there's a pretty heavy... I think the, the brandy is coming through much more than mm. the rum. There's a real cognac quality to this. Right. Not that I'm a, much of a cognac expert, but... I'll just consult my notes for a quick it reminder. It does... Um, and it yes, the really come through. rum is the final cask used yeah. here. There's sherry, brandy, rum in that progression. So, on the palate, mm. full strength, 50%. Ooh. A lot of wood up front. Mm. Wow, that's difficult to nail down. Yeah, a lot happens in a short space of time. You get wood, then a hint of peat smoke, then those different casks start rolling through. There's some gentle ginger and citrus for bourbon casks, then into the sherried fruits, then into the some just warm toffee brandy flavours, and finally the lively energetic sugary sugarcane rum. But also a, just a good whiff of smoke on it finish as well, again from the peat. It just comes back for a bit of a um, reprise at the end there. This is this is bizarre. Yeah. This is. Like we've talked about roller coasters of flavour before. This one might take it. This tasting this is like your tongue going through an episode of American Gladiator. <laughs> I feel like mm -hmm. I've gone gone over the hurdles, <sighs> through the hoops, and then I don't know. Vulcan has hit me with a massive foam rubber pole, and I've fallen into the ball pit. This is. <sighs> There is almost too much going on here. It I'll see is if I can, quite an adventurous. See if we can uh, form the timeline here. Yeah. Okay, so up front, up front we have this funny mixture of peat and, as you say, there's a little bit of wood comes in right at the start. Yeah. I think that's the sherry wood coming in. Hmm. It's a darker. There's a tanning, oh dear, tannic element to it, which reminds me of. European oak specifically, mm. then that kind of takes a back seat, and we get this sort of spike of the youthful, slightly um, yeah, that metallic twang comes back in, and you get this big hit of youthful spirit, and then it just goes on this bananas finish, mm. which keeps modulating, and we've got more and more European sherry characteristics. We've got some some ripe tropical fruit, and then it goes, it finally in the end kind of crystallizes into what I really relate to uh, root, almost called a dardberg, mm -hmm. um, which is the sort of really ripe tropical fruit and spices. And that just kind of lingers on, and it's really pretty long finish. I think <clears throat> adding a bit of water may shed yeah. more light on 50 this. is an excellent strength. It's good to see that being yeah. the standard, not, not some kind of a special strength for this one. It is how it comes. Because yeah, without without water, the the finish is definitely the best part of that that whiskey, and it's still going on. It's a very very long, very uh, complicated finish. Quite a bit of visiometric swirling happening there. Nice to see. Okay, okay. Hmm. This is a bit more discernible now. This can be translated a bit easier. This has made it a lot more sort of fruit forward. The peat is dramatically receded that's far less aggressive now on the nose and the the super ripe fruit is much much more prevalent it's much more identifiable as an armor typical armor whiskey at this stage peat is more it's gentle on the tongue but it's more expansive it envelops mm. more of the flavor spectrum kind of like a on an overcast day the a uh, cloud of peat hanging over proceedings now. Not in a bad way, just it's more uh, prevalent throughout. What's It's still though impressive that each separate flavour, peated, unpeated, and those assorted casks, you can taste each one separately. They haven't mm. exactly combined together into a big indistinguishable morass. Each one is still its own thing. You can taste them all separately, in sequence. I think, every sip. Yeah, I, th I think this is better with water, because it gets to the it gets to the complex 
latter half of the pallet faster mm. because we're adding water speeds the whole the whole thing up. So that's definitely that would be my that would be my way of drinking it. I honestly prefer it at full fifty percent mm. uh, unwatered or at least a very minimal watering. This adds extra intensity to it. Adds to the inherent the energetic vigour you mm. get from Indian spirit. This this might be a sort of an unorthodox suggestion here, but I think this would be one of the and a few few malt whiskies that may even benefit from a big old ice cube uh -oh. in there because that would in the first instance it would calm it all down mm. and so the slightly aggressive younger spirit that pops up early in the palate would be calmed somewhat. Secondly it would as the ice slowly melted, I think you would be able to have this lovely, you'd get the transition mm. between cask strength through to a more dilute whiskey. And I think you'd encounter quite a lot of, you'd have a real broad range of flavours getting there. Yeah, now, see, now the peat's coming back in yeah. as it warms up in the glass. It would be interesting to see how ice would affect the peat and how it interplays with the other mm. properties too. I find typically ice will, um, that'll, that'll lock peat down, it'll right. dramatically reduce peat's influence. That's definitely something to try at home if you've got a, a bottle of this, although, mm. as we say, this, this is two years old now, so that yeah. might have, um, it might be a completely different animal, but mm. probably yeah. um, remain much the same, except probably different uh, amount of finishing in each cask, perhaps, maybe even some different casks, I'm not sure. Finally, I recollect that this at one point involved port casks, but I could be mistaken there. Mm. And what to do, do some impressive things with port. So yeah. I may have just been conflating the two in my recollections. So, scores for this one. Mm. This is going to be a tricky score, because yeah. um, this is a very tricky whiskey. There's very little is hard and fast about this one, which makes scoring it a bit more of an exercise than it can be. Um, to me, this is... It's a whiskey with a hell of a lot of moving parts, mm. um, which just really, really multiplies the complexity of trying to nail it down in your head regarding a score. I think there's maybe just one or two moving parts too many, which is causing mm. the whole thing. There's a bit of a there's a bit of a rattle, I guess. Um, the whole thing feels like it's on the brink of completely spinning apart and having no centre like having no core flavour or character. It does, it does, but it's on the verge of not having one. It's almost a, it's almost too sort of nebulous. But it does, it does manage to have, the, the armour at heart is still there. You just have to kind of look for it, especially um, at that cask strength. But easier to do with water. So, for me this one, this one's an 82. Oh. There's a lot to like, but... You have to, you kind of have to search a wee bit to, you kind of have to be your own centre when you're tasting it, or this one will just suck you along and take mm. you for a ride. Uh, be very, very difficult to keep up with. What do you think? Well, when you're combining this many flavours into a single spirit, there is a fine line between symphony and cacophony. This one comes down on the harmonious side. There is a lot happening admittedly, but each one contributes to the overall experience, it doesn't turn into a jumble, it doesn't turn into a mess. It is balanced and orderly, despite being a explosively characterful and very engaging and constantly surprising dram. And it rates an 89 from me. Yeah. So more more sort of strong stuff from yeah. Amrit. Sadly, this might be the last Amrit we look at for a wee while, mm. because there is currently now... No distributors for oh. the Armourette brand in our country. Isn't I think right? Armourette were okay. Paul John, oh, was sadly, Paul John the other lost. Indian yeah. distiller, who are possibly even better than Armourette, sadly don't have a local supplier anymore. Mm. But Armourette is oh, still well, there. Armourette's still good. All right. What is happening though is that Indian whiskey is now finally getting the recognition it deserves internationally from connoisseurs. So prices are going up. It is now. Uh, for a relatively young whiskey, it is very pricey. Mm. I won't give numbers here because it's useless internationally, but this cost roughly the same as, say, oh, whiskies are bought for the same price. Uh, 21 year old Glengoin um, springs to mind. It is, yeah, it's similar to what happened with Japanese whiskey, really. It came onto the market, connoisseurs started to take notice and give it the respect it deserved, which drove prices up. But it hasn't caught the popular, like, the general public imagination yet. 
Um, so that which tends to bring prices down. We've seen no mm. Japanese whiskey recently, but general public are realizing, hey, this is really good. So it becomes more available, prices come down again to a sensible level. Remember what Japanese whiskey was like four or five years ago, it year to mortgage um, most oh, of your property boy, to buy one. I, I have to check the prices yeah. again, but it's still still ruinous, yeah. I think. But anything anything to take the heat off Japanese, yeah. I suppose. Um, that's, so that's a good thing. Indian whiskey is on that same journey now. People who appreciate good whiskey are appreciating just how good Indian whiskey is, but in you know, the anglophonic world, the average person just isn't taking notice of it yet, despite how much it deserves to have notice taken. So until that happens, the price is going to remain at connoisseur levels, which is a barrier. The reason I got this is I was I went into the store, I was hell-bent on leaving with some Indian whiskey. I was determined to have some because there was a gap in the shelf, gap in the tasting uh, ladder, as it were. It needed to be filled, it needed to be filled with some Indian single malt. Had not been for that, I would have passed over on it, mainly because the price is outside my usual comfort zone for a, um, well, a new full-size bottle. Yeah, yeah, so Indian, Indian whiskey um, takes its place on yeah. the on the world stage, and consequently, you've got to want it yeah. um, to, to shell out, so mm. they've, um, they have, uh, they've, they've made it in mm. terms of the... Um, Having a having an internationally recognised whiskey, as yeah. Dave says. So um, we'll sort of uh, we'll 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 sweep back to. Oh, we might be going to America next. I think. Oh. I think it might be time for a real star-spangled bourbon. But you'll just have to tune back in to see what that one's going to be. Um, it's a true. Oh, that joke isn't even going to play. I won't even bother. Uh, Stanja, Stanja, you'll see. You'll see. <laughs>